All right, everybody. Um, I've been promising you that I'd do a little video going over some of our Newton's second law problems. So this is taking a step uh, back from the third law. If you've had a chance to watch the video on the third law, I'm taking a step back because there's a couple things that some students are having difficulty with that I want to review and make sure that you guys understand before we move on. And uh, in particular, what I want to go over right now is uh, one of these troublesome ramp problems. So there are some students having a little bit of difficulty with the ramp problems, in particular having a little bit of difficulty, I think, some people with the geometry here. Um, so I had mentioned before that if, uh, if you have a ramp like this, and we call this angle right here, if we call that angle A, I mentioned that this angle here is also A. Let's, oh, look, maybe I should take a step back and make sure that we understand what's going on. This is a ramp right here. I've drawn the triangle, right triangle, and I've got this block. This thing's supposed to be some sort of a block, some sort of a mass, M, which is on the ramp, right? It's, this, is, this is the connection right here between the block and the ramp. This arrow right here, this one, is the weight, Mg. And this here, these two are the components of the weight. This right here, this arrow, is supposed to be the component of the weight that's acting, acting perpendicular to the ramp, which is m, g, in this case, cosine of angle A, right, that's angle A. I, I've been calling that angle theta in class, but I'm calling it angle A right now. This is the component of the weight m, g that's acting parallel to the ramp. I, I typically draw this up here, right? But it's the same thing as this. I usually draw this component, I just transpose it up there, but this would be m g sine a. So this is the angle a, and, and there were some students who were um, a little hung up on how I know that that angle is the same thing as this angle. Um, intuitively, you might be able to kind of imagine if I, if I took this, if I could grab on right here and kind of make this ramp change the angle of the ramp by taking this ramp and, and either making angle A bigger or smaller, that, that this angle would naturally get bigger or smaller as I made this angle bigger or smaller. But if that's not intuitive, I want to try to prove um, that in fact those angles are the same. And the way I want to do that is uh, I'm actually going to try to uh, take a look at um, two triangles within this picture. There's a whole bunch of triangles here, but I want to specifically think about this triangle right here. I'll actually do it in blue. This triangle from here to here to here. Right? If I continued this line down, right? If this is a triangle right here, all the way down here and here, that's a triangle. And I want to think about this triangle right here. These are both right triangles, right? These are both right triangles. That's a right angle, that's a right angle. Um, I know this is a right angle right here because I've defined this component, mg cosine theta, as the piece of mg that's parallel or sorry, perpendicular to the ramp. So by definition, that's a 90 degree angle. This right here, this line I know is uh, straight down towards the center of the earth. The weight is always directly down, so 100% in the y direction. And the bottom of my ramp is, is horizontal, is flat, is in the x direction, so I know that this is a 90 degree angle. Now you might remember, so if this is angle A, let me get back to red here. If this is angle A, let's call this guy right here, that's angle B, okay? So we've got angle A and angle B, okay? And that's a 90 degree angle. Well, let's take a look at this angle right here. Take a look at that angle. That angle, if you remember your geometry, that angle right there has to be equal to B as well. These are what we call vertical angles. Um, if I have two lines, I'll draw this out again. If I have a line here and a line there, that is weak effort by me, I'll try that again. If I have a line like this and a line like that, these angles, this angle here and that angle there, they're called vertical angles and they're always equal. These angles are always equal. So these two are vertical angles right here, this angle right here, and this angle right here. These are the same angle right there and right there. So if this is B and that's B, right, they're, they're the same angle. So what that means is that if I take a look at my first blue triangle right here, it has a 90 degree angle and another angle B. This littler triangle right here has a 90 degree angle and another angle B, which means the third angles have to be equal. 
So that's one way that that for me to kind of prove to you or try to convince you that this angle right here, there's a lot of other ways to, to prove this by the way, but I'm trying to show you that this angle right here and this angle are, have to be the same angle. Like I said, other ways of proving it, but that's that's one way that, I don't know, seems simple to me. Um, I'll, if you wish, I'll leave you to find other solutions, other ways of proving that. Um, so hopefully, if you didn't previously take my word on it, you believe me now. Let's uh, now let's apply this this to a uh, uh, a Newton second law problem. So let's say I have a ramp here. Here's this ramp, and I've got a block on the ramp, a mass m on this ramp, and this ramp is angled at some angle theta, like that. And let's let make some let's let, let's get get some givens in here. Let's say that the mass is. Oh, I don't know, let's call it three kilograms. And we'll say that the angle theta there is 25 degrees. Actually, looks a little bit more than 25 degrees, but let's just say it's 25 degrees. And let's say that there's friction here. Let's imagine that this surface isn't completely smooth. Maybe there's some bumpiness to the surface. And let's say that the coefficient of friction, the mu value, is 0.2. The question I'm going to ask you is based with, with these givens, with this information, what's the acceleration of the block? Okay, so what's the acceleration of the block here? That's the question I'm asking. Based on that mass, three kilograms, the angle of the ramp being 25 degrees and the mu vac, uh, value being 0.2. This is supposed to be 0 0.2. 0 .2. Um, so let's let's take a look here. Let's let's start off by drawing our forces um, as we always do. So we've got this is gravity down mg. Okay, here's the component of gravity that's into the ramp. That's mg times the cosine of theta. Remember, I just showed you this is theta, right? If this is theta, this is theta. I've just tried to prove that to you. So you have to agree with me now that this is mg cosine theta. Now the component perpendicular or parallel to the ramp, that component, I'm going to draw that up here because I like to draw all the forces coming out of the block. This has to be mg sine theta. Again, you have to agree with me now. You have no choice. I asked you to take it on faith before, but now you have to agree with me because I, I proved it to you. So I, I, I just I, I moved this, I moved that right up there. So I'm just to make the picture simpler, I'm going to go ahead and erase this here. So you don't get confused about what that arrow is all about. Okay, I just moved it up there. Nothing tricky there. Um, all right, so what other forces do we have? Well, we've got the normal force, which is acting up. Let's draw that guy in. Let's see, I'll use this color here. The normal force acting up. Let's try that again. Okay. And we mentioned before that the normal force here has to be equal to the force of the weight, mg, acting perpendicular to the ramp. In other words, it's got to be equal to mg cosine theta. Now, I mentioned this to you before. The way I, I can, tried to convince you that this was true, I tried to convince you that this force here and this force were equal. And the way I tried to convince you before was to say, look, in this direction, and what, what we were calling the y direction, the perpendicular to the ramp here, it, the block is not accelerating. And if the block is not accelerating, it must be in equilibrium in that direction. Um, so that was my, the way I convinced you. But before, we could, I could try to convince you now using Newton's third law, right? I could say that if the block pushes into the ramp with a force of mg cosine theta, then the ramp pull, pushes back on the block with a force of mg cosine theta. So you could actually use Newton's third law to show that these two have to be equal. All right, what else do we have? Well, now we've got a frictional force which, which is acting backwards this way. And that's going to be mu times the normal force. Let's remember that. Force of friction is mu times the normal force. Um, so that's going to be mu times the normal force, which is, well, I'll just, write, I'll just write normal force for now. We know that the normal force is mg cosine theta, so we can substitute that in there in just a minute. All right, well, let's see. What's the acceleration of the block? Well, what forces matter? Well, we just said that this force here, the normal force, cancels with mg cosine theta. In other words, they go away. This, I don't have to worry about that guy. I don't have to worry about that guy. They're gone. They've, they, they eliminate one another. 
I split this up into its components, so I don't have to worry about him yet either. He's, he's, a set, he's effectively gone. So the only forces that are left are this force pulling the block down the ramp, and this force pushing the block up the ramp, or trying to hold the block up the ramp, okay? Now, to find the net force then, the net force is gonna be this minus that. So mg sine theta minus mu times the normal force. So that's my net force. And my acceleration is gonna be my net force over the mass. So now I can start doing some substitutions, okay? I can take this whole thing here, I can put this whole thing in, That's my net force, I can put that in there, and then I can put in mg cosine theta in for the normal force. In other words, I can now come up with an expression that's gonna say the acceleration is equal to mg cosine, or mg sine theta, minus mu times the normal force, which I know is mg cosine theta, right? That's this thing here. This, the normal force doesn't factor in here, but it does factor in because the normal force works into the, the friction equation. And that's all gonna be divided by the mass m, okay? So we know the mass m, so we can plug that in. We know g, we know theta, and we know mu, we know everything. Now you might have immediately realized here that the, uh, the m's are gonna go away, right? There's an m in this term, an m in that term, and an m in the denominator, so they all go away. And so what do I have here as my, my final expression? The acceleration is g sine theta minus mu times g cosine theta. The m's are gone. Let me try to see if I can do that a little bit neater. Try to make that a little neater here. The acceleration is equal to g times the sine of theta minus mu times g cosine of theta, right? The m's cancel, so that's what I'm left with. I know g, I know sine, I know uh, theta, I know mu, I know theta, I know g, I know all of these things. So I can now plug in my values here and I'm gonna get uh, 9.8 sine 25 minus 0.3, did I make it 0.3, is that what it is? No, no, 0.2, I think I made it 0.2, sorry. 0.2 times 9.8 cosine 25. And now just plug into the calculator, pretty straightforward calculation. Hopefully this ends up being like 4.14 minus about 1.78. Subtract those out and I get roughly 2.4 meters per second squared. And that is my final answer. Okay, so hopefully Going over this problem, problem of this sort in a, a little bit more detail, going over a little bit slower, helped, helped you understand what was going on. The first step was figuring out this picture, right? Figuring out all the forces and then combining the forces and then finally doing the calculation. I think the hard work is figuring out this picture, um, which is you know, more concepts than, than it is math. So um, if you understand the concepts, hopefully the math wasn't tripping you up. Okay, I hope that's helpful and I will see you again soon.